So today, let's do something a little different just to break up the elementary school math. In addition, we'll do subtraction, but could get a little repetitive. So let's take a day to talk about different faces. And I don't know if it will take the whole day, but we've got homework that you can do if it doesn't. So let's let's look at a number. 1,427. This is written in the standard way, which is decimal or base 10. So let's cast our mind back if possible, to when we were learning about numbers for the very first time. And let's try to recall how base 10 works. I mean, it's something that's probably by now so intuitive to us that it might sort of be hard to think about. But in base 10, you have a ones place, a tens place, a hundreds place, a thousands place, and so on. And what I mean by and so on is that there's a pattern here, and the pattern is not just that we're adding a zero every time we go to the left, the pattern is that these are powers of 10. There's a 10 to the first, a 10 to the second, a 10 to the third. If you had, if I had more space on the left, the next um, face would be the 10,000th space, that's 10 to the fourth. And even this one is a power of 10. One is a power, um, one is 10 to the zero power. So how does base 10 work, as it were? Well, when you're writing numbers in base 10, you have 10 symbols you can use. And those symbols are the numbers between 0 and 9. And you swap. the symbols in to the ones place and the tens place and whatever faces you have. And this is telling you that we have three ones. And this is telling you that you have nine tens. And this is telling you that we have five hundreds, and this is telling you that we have one ten thousand. And you take that ten thousand and those five hundreds and those nine tens and those three ones, and you put them all together and you get a number. Um, 1,593. Now, base 10 is not inevitable. There's nothing magical about it. 
correct. In fact, the ancient Babylonian number system for one was not base 10. And it seems to be kind of the common number system, just because counting 10 fingers, at least that's why I assume it's so common. But there's nothing forcing you to use this number 10 and build your entire number system about that, around that, I should say. Imagine that I wanted, instead of 10, to build a number system around five. How would that work? Well, I have some symbols. When we're working in base 10, the symbol is start at zero and end at nine. So kind of symmetry would suggest that our symbol was here should start at zero and end at four. And then just as with base 10, we have faces, but we no longer have a tens face and a hundreds face and a thousands face. What would we have instead? Now here, you see the faces are powers of 10. So if we're going to use five, we'll still have a ones face because one is five to the zero. But then instead of a tens face, we'll have a fives face. Instead of a hundreds face, we'll have a twenty fifth face. Instead of a thousands face, We'll have a 125th face. And instead of a 10,000 face, we'll have what? Five times 100 is 500, and another 100 is 600, and then another 25. We'll have a 625th face if I'm doing that math correctly. So if we write, well, we can't write 1593 because 5 and 9 aren't in our allowable symbols. But if we wrote something like 1, 2, 4, 3, that's allowable. And this is saying we have one, 125. This is saying that we have two, 25s. This is saying that we have four, fives. And this, is saying that we have three ones. So if we wanted to write this in the normal way, that is, if we wanted to write it in decimal, well, we've got 125 and 225s is 50. And four fives is 20, and three ones is three. So that's what? 125 plus 70 is 195 plus three. 
If my mental arithmetic is on point, that's 198. Written in the standard way. Written in decimal. Um, different faces are probably, I mean, in day-to-day -day life, there are probably valid reasons to use base 10. I mean, among other things, taking powers of 10 is so easy. We start with one, then we add a zero, then we add another zero, then we add another zero, and we just keep going. That's not true with powers of five, is it? I had to think when I went from 125 to 625, and I'd have to think even harder if I wanted to go to the next decimal place. It's 625 times five, whatever that might be. Still, different faces clearly have their faces. And I mean, the, the we don't have programming courses exactly at Chadron State. We do have a coding club. But I mean, the classic place to see bases other than 10 is in programming. And the classic base you see other than 10 is base 2. When you're watching a a movie and someone's hacking something and there are a bunch of zeros and ones on the screen. That is base two. That's binary. And just as with base 10 and base 5, we've got allowable symbols that start at 0 and end one below our base. So our only allowable symbols here are 0 and 1. And we still have a 1's place. We always have a one's place because one is any number to the zero power. Then we have a two's place, a four's place, an eight's place, a sixteenth's place, and so on, however many places we need to represent the number. And again, where I'm getting these is that they're powers of the base. In this case, powers of two. So if I write something like O one zero zero one one, and I write that in a binary, and I want to go into base ten, what is it? Well, there is one sixteen. There are no eights, there are no fours, there's a two, and there's a one. So in our standard way of writing, in the base 10, one zero zero one one is the number 19. The sort of standard joke, it's not funny because math jokes are never funny, but it's that there are 10 type of people in the world, those who understand binary and those who don't. And that's because 10 is 
two. One is zero in the binary, is two in the standard decimal system. So this could potentially, of course, be very confusing because let's say I have 142. I mean, or rather, let's say I have the symbols one, four, and two. We think that's 142. We're used to it being 142. But if we were in a different base, if we were in base five, that would not be the number 142. It would be something different. One, five, 25. So we have a 25 and we have five, we have four fives, 20. And then we have two ones. So instead of 142, this would represent 47. In practice, we don't have that problem because of that bit of notation. If a number, if a string of digits isn't a number in base, and if it's in some kind of weird base, like a five, we just put the base next to the last number. We write it small and then we write it low so you don't mistake it for a digit. Okay, so then what have we done so far? Well, we've introduced the um idea of separate bases. And we've done some conversions. I mean, I haven't uttered the phrase conversion, but here we took a number in base five and we wrote it as a number in base and here we took a number in base two and we wrote it as a number in base 10. That process seems relatively straightforward. We just chop down what each of these spaces represent and then we look at what we have. Well, we have 116, we have no eights, we have no fours, we have one, two, and we have one, one. And then we throw them all together. We add them all up. Going the other way is a little more of a nuisance. Maybe, maybe it's demoralizing for me to say that. But if we want to write something 157, you notice that I don't have a number down here. So this is 157. It's the standard number. If I want to write it in base three, okay, well, I'll need a ones place and a three place and a nines place, the 27s place, and let's see, we're reaching the limit of my ability to do this in my head. 27 times three, well, you have three 20s, which is 60. 
and then three sevens, which is 21. So we have an 81 space. Uh, notice, by the way, you know, but I was introducing those mental tricks um, yesterday, well, not yesterday, but earlier this week that you do the same kind of tricks for multiplication. And the next thing is 243. We don't need 243 because we're only going up to this number. How many 243s are there in 157? Well, there aren't any. So, I mean, we can put a zero here, but just like with binary, we don't normally put a zero there to tell you there aren't any thousands. We uh, can just end when we get to um, above the number we're looking at. And now we just, we work from left to right. How many 81s are in 157? Well, 80 times 2 is 160, so 81 times 2 is um, 162. That's too big. There's only one 1 in there. So now, how much do we have left? Let's do. Well, we started with 157, and... We haven't introduced subtraction, but I assume we basically remember how to do this. We have 76 left. So now we go to our next digit and we say, well, we have 76 left. How many times will 27 go in? And this is easier if we have a calculator. 27 certainly won't go into 76 four times. It won't go into 76 three times. It will, let's not, let's try not to make any goofy errors in our, in our elementary school math. It will go into 76 um, two times. And what does that leave you with? So well, you had a 76, Two twenty sevens is fifty four, so that leaves you with. Am I doing something wrong? <clears throat> I was explaining something. Okay. So that leaves you with what? Fifty four plus two is fifty six, plus twenty is seventy six. That leaves you with 22. And finally, we're reaching the point where I can just do this math in my head, and maybe you can too. How many times does 9 go into 22? Well, 18 times. I mean, it goes in two times, and two, that's 18. That leaves you with four. Three goes into four once. That leaves you with one. One goes into one once. 
And notice that if we start at on the left, um, where this is going to work automatically, we at no point did we get any number that was three or bigger when we were doing these divisions. So kind of a hassle, um, to be honest, but at least it's at least it's an algorithm. At least you don't have to sort of use your creativity. It's a sort of question. Do we use a decimal uh, when we write it out without the place values? Like without writing a uh, eighty-one twenty-seven nine. Or is that how you want us to write it on our homework? Oh, I mean, you don't have, I, I'm just writing these so that it's obvious what, like, that this one represents. doesn't, you don't have, you wouldn't write that, like, on homework. Okay. Thank you. So now that we've seen other bases, actually, there's one other base I wanted to touch on, just because I said, you know, aside from base 10, the base you see most often is base 2. The base you see third most often is interesting because it's a base higher than 10. And again, you see this in computer science mostly, assembly code. This is, this is a long shot, but if you've ever like messed around with the video game file, there are like hexadecimal editors that you can go in and change stuff. So what makes hexadecimal kind of interesting and different from what's come before is the symbols. I mean, if this is base 16, we need 16 symbols starting at zero and working our way up. And now what? I mean, the next number is 10, but using 10 as a symbol is going to cause all kinds of confusion. Like you write a number quickly and you can't tell if it's four digits or two digits or what. So instead of writing 10 in hexadecimal, we write A. Then in, and instead of 11, we write B. So the digits in hexadecimal go from zero to nine and then A through F. And in hexadecimal, you have your ones place, you have your 16 in a place because hexadecimal is base 16. And then you have, and I'm going to cheat. Or at least I'm going to cheat if Google cooperates with me. And instead of doing this in my head, I'm going to write 16 times 16 into Google and get 256. Because remember, this is 16 to the first. This is 16 square. Let's write that differently. 
This is the 256 phase. And this is the 16 cubed phase. 16 times 16 times 16, 4096. And so on. The next place would be, um, what am I doing? Why did I, sometimes I just write stuff and I don't know why. Not 13 cubed, 16 cubed. The next place would be 16 to the fourth and so on. So if we have a number in hexadecimal, it might look like B, nine, A, one. And let's try to make this out. D represents 13. It's in the 4096 face. So we have 13 4096s. Nine is in the 256 place. So we have nine 256s. A is 10 and it's in the 16's place. So we have 10 16's, and then one is in the 1's place. So we have one one's. And as for what that is, well, we have, let's see, we have 13 times 4,096, and we have 9 times 256, and we have 10 sixteens. And we have one one fifty five thousand seven hundred and thirty. So that's hexadecimal. And again, I don't really have the computer science background to know why um, this space in particular is used so often in programming. I mean, I can see that it's a power of two, and I know why two is used so often. So presumably those facts are related. But anyway, now that we've messed around with faces a little, why don't we learn addition all over again? There isn't time to do all of the algorithms we've now seen, so let's just do the standard carrying algorithm. And we'll start with normal addition. I mean, normal bases, base 10. Seven plus four is 11. Carry the one. Five and two is seven and one is eight. Three and one is four. Four, 81. Let's compare and contrast two four one two 
four, four, four. Book written in base five. So not 2,412, but whatever that number represents in base five, and not 444, but whatever that number represents. As a matter of fact, this is the same addition. 2412 is the base five version of 357. 444 is the base 5 version of 124. So, over here, we have 7 plus 4. 7 plus 4 is 11. So why aren't we allowed to just write that? Seven plus four is 11. We can put the 11 down there. Or I mean, obviously we can't. Um, because when we're doing this addition, we have the places, we have the ones place, we have the tens place, we have the hundreds place, and we have the allowable digits, which are zero through nine. We're not allowed to put an 11 in the ones place. The only number that goes into the ones place are the digits between zero and nine. So what we're doing when we're carrying, I don't, and decades ago in Pennsylvania, this was not really explained to me. So I hope, um, hope that sort of changed in elementary education and we're not just doing stuff because the teacher says so. We're taking this 11 and we're saying, we're breaking it up. We're saying, okay, there's a one in the ones place. There's a 10 in the tens place. Let's go over to the tens place. Or rather, there's a one in the tens place. So the tens places are here, the second column. We got a one in the tens place. Let's just write that one in. And that is all carrying is. It's not a mystery. It's just lining the places up. If you get a five in the tens place or a one in the tens place or whatever, you put it in the tens place. Four plus two, well, it's six, but just like 10, was not an allowable digit that we could write over there. Six is not an allowable digit that we can write here. We're in base five. The only numbers we can write are zero, one, two, three, four. So just like we had to break set our Levin up into a ones place and a tens place, we have to break six up. Six is going to want space to work. Let me sacrifice this side of the white four. Got a ones place, we've got a fives place. When we break six up, there's a one in the fives place and a one in the ones place. Six is five plus one. 
So just like when we're adding with base 10, we put the one in the ones place and we carry the one into the fives place. Then four plus one plus one is six again. We're still not allowed to write six. It's not an allowable digit. Once again, six is one, one. It's a one in the fifths place and a one in the ones place. So we carry again. And now four plus four is eight. Plus one is nine. Nine is not something we can write though. So what is nine? Well, it's a five and four ones. And two plus one is three. And three we are allowed to write down. It's an allowable number. So we've done this addition and got in our answer in base five. And of course the answer in base five is the same as the answer we got when we were doing addition in base 10. It's just written differently. Yeah. So in theory, let me see. Yeah, all of our expand, like our expanded algorithm, adding from the left and so on, that all works in different bases. I mean, it loses a lot of the simplicity. I mean, if you're working in base five and you're trying to do the expanded algorithm and you're going to constantly, let's see. Okay, this is this in base five, but we can't write it. So we'll convert it into base 10. And then I don't know that any of the other algorithms are really any simpler than this one in practice. And that's different bases. The textbook does all sorts of things. It's like, here are different bases. Oh, here are, here are completely different number systems. Here's how the ancient Egyptians wrote their numbers. But I think this is a familiar enough uh, sufficient taste of that kind of thing. And again, the point of all of this, and the reason it gets taught in this class is to try to sort of replicate a student who, you know, has counted one, two, three, four, but doesn't really understand that you've got a ones place and a tens place and a hundreds place. By, well, by doing something similar with bases that we as students are also not familiar with. So I'm going to hand the homework out. Oh, I will say, I mean, the problems in this homework are use a number line to add five and seven. I mean, I don't doubt that everyone in the room can do five plus seven. When it says use the number line, when it tells you what algorithm to use, use the standard algorithm, use the expanded algorithm, doing it in the way that the homework says to do it is the point of the homework. So with that, uh, with that statement made, let me stop.